Hey folks, Big Woodsman here. Today we're going to take one of these moose antlers and we're going to turn it into a wedding ring. So stay tuned. Let's see what we get into. So last fall, right before the archery season for moose, I got married two weeks prior to going on the uh, moose hunt. So my wife was adamant. She was like, you've got to wear your wedding ring. you got to take it with you. The guys got to see it. I was sort of like, the guys don't care about seeing my new wedding ring. But she was adamant that I took it with me. So while we were up there hunting, I ended up getting this little guy right here. So it turns out the guy who gets the animal, of course, is a guy that has to process it and do all the work out there in the woods. So I took this picture to prove to my wife that I had my wedding ring on the whole time while I was up there. So take a look. I guarantee she's not going to ask me to ever do this again. So after that I decided, you know what, we're going to take this little guy that we got last year, I'm going to take a piece of this antler and I'm going to turn it into a new wedding ring and I'm going to wear that now every year that I go moose hunting as a connection to this animal and as a nice little homage to my wife for wearing my wedding ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this antler, we're going to find a piece of antler that fits what our normal uh, ring size would be, be it one of these little stickers, and then I'm going to cut it up, drill it, and show you how to turn it into a ring. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the first thing we need to do is to figure out which piece of the antler we're going to use in order to make our ring. And in order to make it big enough, we have to take our existing ring and with our calipers, we're going to set those to measure just over our ring diameter. So using that distance now, we can go ahead and we can look and we can say, yep, too small, too big, too big, too small, too flat. This also works extremely well for deer antler because it's much rounder than the nice flat pomaded of a moose antler, but it's the moose antler that we want to use today. So looking at this piece right here, this tine right here is the one we want to use. It fits our caliper perfect, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that tine and cut it off right there. We're going to keep this other side for other usages, but for now we're going to take this tine off and this is going to be what do we turn into our new riding ring. So there you go, we've gone ahead, we've clamped the tine that we want to use, we've put it in the vise, we've attached our soft jaws so we're not going to damage it in anything. And now we just go ahead and with a nice clean new blade on the hacksaw, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this antler off. Now cutting antler lets off a pretty good toxic dust. It's kind of really stinky, smelly stuff, so it's always best to use a respirator when you're cutting or grinding or drilling bone in any shape or form. So now that we have the tine cut off that we're going to be using, next thing to do is to take our antler tine with our calipers, find out and mark the exact section that's pretty much going to fit the diameter for our ring. So we have from there. We just mark it with simple pencil, it'll wash right off when we're done. So approximately there. So now what we've done is marked from there to there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to cut these extra pieces off and this section right here can be our rings because that's about the exact diameter of what we need. So here we are, we've taken our antler, we've taken the tine, We've cut it into a few different sections just to see which one will basically fit our wedding ring that we currently have very nicely. The piece that we have in our hand, yes it's a little bit oval but we are going to basically polish that and move that into a nice band. We want to keep some of this nice ornate color as much as possible. It really gives a nice effect to the ring. But now what we've done is we've marked the center where we need to go and we need to drill that hole as close to the size of the ring that fits you. So. I'm looking at a ten and a half, so we're going to uh, drill this as close to a size ten and a half as we can. So we've gone ahead, we've mounted our ring blank from the antler in our in our vise. We've put in padding to sort of grip that nice and solid. It's in there quite well. It's nice and dead flat, perpendicular to the uh, to the bit. 
We were going to use a Forstner bit. We decided to just to start this. We're going to try a stepper bit. The top shank on the stepper bit is about the exact same diameter as our ring. So it'll give us very minimal uh, grinding and polishing on the inside. We will have to do that anyway, but at least this will be a good start. Not sure how this is going to go. Never done one of these before, but we're going to find out. So here's our preliminary ring. We almost got the bit all the way through before we ran out of distance on it. We do have to file this to make it nice and round and comfortable for our finger and we have to size it a little bit larger anyway. But as you can see, that's what our ring would look like. If we had smaller hands, it would already be pretty much done. And then we're going to clean it up, round it off, and size it to fit. So the next work going to be done is going to be with a file, a nice round file to sort of clean up the edges, round it and smooth it and size it to our finger. So there you go, we've sized our ring. Oh, fits perfectly. So the last but extremely important step on our wedding ring is to take varying degrees of sandpaper. We're gonna start at 320, then to 400, and then the last one is a 600. And what we do is we basically just round the edges, make them nice and perfectly smooth. Just keep going back and forth until you get that inner ring just perfectly smooth. And it'll be so comfortable to wear, it'll polish up, it'll shine, it'll look really, really nice. There you go, there's the basis of our ring fits absolutely perfectly and that's what it'll be like. So we've taken our little piece of antler, we've cut it and shaped it and now we've made this nice little wedding band. So as you can see we've got a rich nice colored side on one side and then when you spin it because it was oblong we've now uh, created this beautiful polished bone side. So universal ring you can wear whatever side you'd like. The beautiful part is I harvested this animal myself, so I'll always have a connection to that animal and I'll always have a connection to my loving wife when I'm up there moose hunting. So don't forget to like, subscribe. I'm going to make maybe a few more of these. It's always nice to have a few. Maybe make one for the missus. So as always, it's life out there in the woods. I'll see you out there in it.